All right, you guys, welcome to another episode of the Jada Bell podcast. Uh, Beck Lover is on my show today. He is a world famous motivational speaker. His mission is to motivate people after witnessing many personal tragedies. Some of his most viral clips are motivating words to the Christians, Jews, and Muslims, urging them to unite while also sharing world news and giving insight on the fallen state of the world. And I'm so excited. I don't know if you want to add to that introduction. I mean, that's it in, in essence, right? It's we live in an extremely volatile time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of noise. Yes. Okay. Just from the mainstream. Then you got 4 million podcasts. Yeah. Right. Of which you're doing very well. I'm very proud of you. Thank you're you. You're ranked very high. <laughs> People don't know how much work goes into this and how hard it is. So kudos to you. Thank you. And I think I saw one of your clips and I was like, wow, she looks you know, really awesome. I love her work. I love her message. I'm going to be in Texas. I go to Texas a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I think I reached out to you. I was like, hey, I might yeah. be in Austin and let's knock one out. So I'm happy to be here. And um, yeah, so in a nutshell, my background. Uh, the funny thing is I was actually born in Texas. Oh, really? I was born in Houston, but I grew up in the New York City area my entire life. Okay. I lost my y'all. It's a yo. What is it? I don't have a y'all like you Texans do. I have a yo. I'm not from Texas. That's Where are you from? <laughs> California. Holla, holla. So, <laughs> you know. Um, I love New York City. It exposed me to a lot of different backgrounds, lifestyles, races, creeds, and you can't help but evolve as a human being when you live in that melting pot. Mm -hmm. The last few years, though, have been extremely brutal. The city has been turned upside down. I don't recognize, you know, my city. Yeah. And I just can't help but point the finger at the people that are in charge of everything. And I don't care about left or right, because in my opinion, at the end of the day, both of them did very different things to destroy this nation. And I really believe a lot of them just say, oh, I'm Republican or I'm Democrat. And they're not, you know, they don't, they'll say whatever they are in that market. And you can see it, you know, rhinos. Yeah. Right? They're supposed to be standing for certain values. They don't. Then you got people on the left. I mean, so <clears throat> everyone's galvanized. And my greatest fear is that this country will be ripped apart yeah so in my travels in my work you know first i started my show and then i ended up going on you know being called to go on other shows because everyone was like your background is very extraordinary and and what i i love about my background not to toot my own horn is that i'm caucasian what they would classify. I don't think we should classify people by race anyway, all human beings, but right. by the way the world does it, I'm, I'm a white boy, mm. but I'm a Muslim, mm -hmm. which is already a contradiction. Wow, to, really? To, yeah, it's a contradiction to most people. Mm -hmm. Then you got this white guy who's a Muslim who's talking about how much Christians, Muslims, and Jews really have in common if they're actually following those religions. Right, yeah. Okay, if they're actually following them. And then the world that we live in, <clears throat> which in my opinion, pins these groups against each other, pins these religions against each other. Instead of pointing out the similarities, they focus, laser focus on small differences to galvanize these groups. And in my opinion, make them hate each other, make them fight each other. So the powers that be can control and disrupt all of our lives while destroying conservative values. Mm, wow. That's so if I was the devil, and I know that I want abortion if I'm the devil, right? Satan. Mm -hmm. I want people to be, you know, opposite sex, chop off their body, whatever it is, right? right? Now, as an American, I say, hey, you got those rights, do what you want. It doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Right. We can all coexist. I do believe we can. Mm -hmm. um, but when we start pushing beliefs on people, because being a Christian is a way of life. Yeah, it is. It is a way of life. It's not just, oh, I'm a Christian. No, a Christian means you believe there's a God. You believe Jesus is the Savior. You believe he's going to come back to earth. You're supposed to stand for family values. You're supposed to stand for the nuclear marriage. Right. You're supposed to stand for these things, right? Same thing as a Muslim. Believes there's a God. Believes Jesus will come back. Believes that man and woman, children, these traditional roles, right? Mm -hmm. In essence. So... At this point of the game, with everything we've seen with globalism and extremism, whether it's coming from the feminist movement, extremis, extremism in any capacity is the enemy. 
Yeah, agreed. Even as a Muslim, I'll call out terrorists, right? They don't represent my faith. They don't represent what I believe in. Um, no more than a Catholic priest, just like in California, two days ago, $880, $880 million. The Catholic Archdiocese is ordered to pay 1,390 victims of physical crimes, really? molestation. Yeah. So you're talking about a wow. billion dollar payout. Do those priests represent the ideals of what Catholicism is supposed to stand for? No, they don't. Yeah. But then you have people want to attack the Muslims and say they're pedos. And they're, but yo, look at your own stuff. Like none of these religions teach this stuff. Yeah. Human beings are not perfect. I believe all religions, okay, it doesn't mean I endorse them or I, I believe what they believe, but I know for a fact every faith teaches people to have morals, mm -hmm. teaches people to have respect, teaches people to put others before themselves. That's in all three doctrines. Mm -hmm. That's in the Bible. That's in the Psalms of David. That's in the Holy Quran. It's in, it's in these books. Yeah. So why is the world the way it is? Because no one's practicing their religion. The Muslims not being a Muslim. The Christians not being a Christian. The Buddhist ain't being a Buddhist. You got Buddhists massacring people in Myanmar, massacring them. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Buddhism teaches, right? So it's known as the peaceful religion. Then what happened to the uh, Rohingya? Massacred. By Buddhists, extreme. extremism exists in every single faith and every single ideology. I am for women having their rights. But there's also, there's a negative side to that, right? If we do it to the extreme, what? So a woman having her rights means what? A man should be emasculated completely? Right. Yeah. There needs to be a balance. I believe women are equal to men in the eyes of God. But he gave them different gifts. He gave us different gifts. He gave them different roles. He gave us different roles. And it doesn't mean we have to be in those traditional roles. There's nothing wrong with a woman <clears throat> having a career and all this stuff, but it shouldn't be at the neglect of her children, in my opinion. There's a reason why God put that baby in her womb and not mine, mm. right? Traditionally. Yeah, that's powerful. And this attack on the nuclear family is what my rallying point is between the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews. Hmm. And to the Christians, I say, as a Muslim, we both believe in Jesus Christ. We both love him. Leave Islam out of it. Catholics and Protestants massacred each other for centuries in Europe. That's absurd to me, mm -hmm. right? You got Ukraine and Russia, they're both Orthodox Christian murdering each other. Are they following Christianity? Yeah. So, but this is my whole point. So the media did an amazing job of creating Islamophobia of creating hatred towards a a world faith of almost two billion. Yeah. So that when they're dropping bombs on the other side of the ocean and you're seeing every day what's going on, children being blown up to pieces, massacred, yeah. no one's downplaying what happened on October 7th to them. But do two wrongs make a right? Because I don't believe there's collateral damage with God. I know in Islam there isn't. I know in Islam, it says in the book, you cannot kill women and children. You cannot kill prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. You cannot even cut down a tree unless out of necessity. Mm -hmm. So when a Muslim guy blows up a building with kids in it, he's going to hell. He's never coming out. He's not a yeah. Muslim. Do you understand? Yeah. So people want to look at the acts of certain individuals, but what people don't realize, and you know, I think a lot of people in America don't realize, unless you're an African American, until you've experienced racism, yourself firsthand you don't know you may not even think it exists right yeah. and i started experiencing myself as an american i never experienced it until 9 11 right now i was underneath the world trade center when it got hit so imagine I, I got out of that situation and then all i heard for months and years was muslims are evil f these muslims f their religion f their so i'm like wow and they're all thinking i'm what you know because i'm white that's how ignorant they are yeah because he's white they felt comfortable enough to say these horrible things about a faith that I know changed my life and saved my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to preach it to your audience. And I respect, one of the reasons I came on here was like, this is someone that believes in God. Yeah. She's Christian. For me, the whole world would be amazing if everyone was Christian, yeah. but actually Christian or Muslim or Buddhist. Like if people, are, even Hinduism, not that I agree with a million gods. I believe there's only one God. But what I'm saying is all faiths teach you to be a good person. If you look at the doctrine, Sikhs, Sikhs also have an amazing faith, right? If you study, if you like the principles of those religions, right? Yeah. But we don't.
What makes us different is the concept of who God was. So over this difference, we're going to kill each other. We have the right to judge each other. Like, I laugh at this. I tell my Christian brothers and sisters, I'm like, yo, Christ is going to come back. He'll tell us who was right and wrong. We both believe he's coming back. Yeah, I saw. If you get raptured before me, then I know I'm done. I'm going to hell. I'm, I'm finished. But until he comes back, let's focus on the enemy. Let's focus on the one who wants to question all that God's created. Mm -hmm. To go against, because that's what the devil does. He goes against God's creation. You're a woman, or you should be a man. You're a man, you should be a woman. Yeah. You know? Uh, don't get married. Be full of lust. And we are seeing people are like, why is the world the way it is? Because first you had the generation of lust from the 60s, right? The sexual revolution. Right. 30-year delay. Now you see the generation of bastards. That's what I've dubbed this generation. Yeah. And when you study violent crime, 90% comes from single-parent homes mm -hmm. where most of the time there's the father figure missing from that that situation right which begets violence mm -hmm. i was never scared of my mom i would have ran circles around i was terrified of my dad i knew he'd come home and that's the problem we have not only in america it's spreading across the globe that's why this violence this culture the music it all centers around deadly sins yeah and from deadly sins most of these children are created so they were created not from love they were created from lust mm -hmm. And deadly sins have deadly repercussions. And that's the world that we live in. That's how a kid walks into a school and opens fire on his classmates. That's how women end up pregnant at the age of 14, 15, and they don't know what to do. And now they've created generational trauma and those kids. So it's like, we, oh, we want to act, even if there wasn't a God, right? Mm -hmm. Which I know there is. If I had to bet my life 25, 30 I'll years of Yeah, I'll. I'll <laughs> Uh, you know, but when we look at, you know, why we are where we are, and it's not just America. You see, people go like, why do you think we're towards the end of time? I truly believe we are towards the final phase of humanity. Why? Because when we study the Bible, when we study these books of God, it was Sodom and Gomorrah, it was Pompeii, it was, uh, you know, Babylon, right? Right. Like in that time, this one place was bad, right? Mm -hmm. So God would destroy that civilization, but he didn't do it without giving them time, right? He always warned them. Mm. He always sent them a messenger. And I say he, it's not because God is some, you know, at least from our perspective, some male or woman, like it's God, you know, but they, they use, you know, they say him in Islam, him, you know? But why do I think we're in the end of time? Because this godlessness, this everything against the creation mm -hmm. is not only here in the West, it has now spread to some of the most traditional conservative yeah civil you know civilizations and cultures that we have right now in the whole world and people go well, you know the internet well the internet did exactly what it was supposed to do yeah the world wide web that's what that www stands for world wide web what does a spider do to entangle its prey it makes a web and we're all now entangled in this web with our serotonin drips, with our swipe left, swipe right, swipe, nothing's real. I'm not happy with my girl, let me go with the next one. Yeah. Okay, and it can be used for good like it's being used right now, to have real discussions, to learn, to build bridges. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is happening, and that makes me happy to be a part of that, and to build bridges between communities, and to wake people up, because this division, especially here in America, to me, is very terrifying. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, we really are on the brink of something catac cataclysmic happening unless we can find that middle ground. And I don't Polar see opposites it. as yeah, well. I, I don't see it. Jamie. Yeah. Like I drove from New York to LA two years ago and back. And the way we're divided, it's, I, I, I don't see, I don't, I'm trying to find that common ground and I, I just don't see it. Yeah. Cause like a, a conservative, if you, if you talk to, someone who's radically like a liberal or just radically for the woke agenda it's just polar opposite from conservative values and so and you're never going to convince a conservative like one that really genuinely loves god and follows the will of god to ever really get on board with that uh listening to talk is like the same discussions that happen at my husband's household um with his family like this is all it is and you're just sitting back and listening and 
I'm just so blessed to like sit here and absorb all of this information. I'm excited for my husband to watch this too. He's going to love listening to you talk. <laughs> but you already answered like so many of my questions. So I wanted to get into uh, one of the main things you do talk about is like the technology and how it's advancing. And my generation, which sucks to say, but Gen Z is so about, they grew up with technology. And so where are we headed? Where is an uh, my children and their children headed as well in a world that the technology is inv- advancing and impacting us. You know, a lot of the signs of the end of time are, they overlap between Christianity and Islam. Mm-hmm. Now, Islam doesn't necessarily talk about the mark of the beast and the chip, but it does talk about the Antichrist and probably in more detail than the Christian perspective, like really deep. Mm. who he'll be, what he'll look like, what his signs are. And, you know, we don't know, we don't go as far as saying that the mark of the beast is 100% accurate from the Islamic perspective. But if I had to guess, I would say yes, it is. I would say yes, that prophecy is probably going to happen from the Bible because we can see it's going there. Mm. What we know from our perspective is that the Antichrist will be a being on earth that's like Pharaoh. The last person that had superpower on earth that said he was God in the human form was Pharaoh, the most hated person by God, because he was so arrogant. He saw God's miracles. Mm -hmm. Imagine, God didn't just destroy Pharaoh. He sent Moses, peace be upon him. He sent him, he said, listen, I was sent by the one that created the whole universe. Yeah. And he's saying to let these people go. And if you don't, this is going to happen. So he saw all the plagues and he still told his people, I'm God. Now imagine the arrogance. He's seen the locust. He's seen the river turn to blood. And he's still telling them, no, I'm God. Yeah. So God drowned him, right? Mm -hmm. What we believe towards the end of time, just like Christians, before Jesus Christ returns, peace and blessings be upon him, that every Muslim must say that when they mention his name, Mm -hmm. to show him the respect that he deserves. Because the prophets didn't have easy lives. They're examples to us. Just like in the Christian perspective, Jesus is an example to you of how to live your life. But many Christians don't. Right. He said, love your enemy. I don't see that. I see, I see vengeance. I see, hey, it's good what's going on over there. Let's wipe them out. Mm-hmm. When the truth of the matter is, they misquote verses in the Quran, for example, of like, uh, kill the infidel. Has nothing to do with Christians at all. Mm-hmm. Yet most of the people in Texas, they think the Muslims believe that Christians are infidels. No, actually they don't. The infidels that the Quran's talking about mm-hmm. are the pagan Arabs, the ones that were attacking the Prophet Muhammad for saying, no, there's not a thousand million gods, there's only one God. His own family was trying to kill him, his own cousins, his own tribes. Mm-hmm. They were the infidels. Christians are called the people of the book in Islam. They have a protected class. What that means is because they received revelation, and guidance, they received books, the Torah, the Psalms of David, and the Gospel of Christ, Mm -hmm. the people of the book. The Quran and Islam doesn't teach you, go kill them and murder them and massacre them. Mm. As a matter of fact, you go to hell. As a matter of fact, if we quote the Quran, it says, Christians, Jews, and Sabians, as long as you follow what your prophets brought you. See, but that's where the debate comes between the two faiths, but I'm going to get back to your question in a second. Okay. As long as they follow what Jesus brought, if you're following what Jesus brought, You're guaranteed paradise in Islam. We don't condemn Christians to hell. Most Christians don't know that. They don't want to read, but most Muslims don't know either because they don't read. Mm. How do I think this is going for you and my children? I think as we're talking here today, there's millions of people around the world trading cryptocurrencies. They're making lots of money. I have a cousin that made millions of dollars Mm -hmm. making Bitcoin, trading Bitcoin, not making it, trading it. Ethereum and all these electronic currencies. They're literally building their own jail, and they don't even realize it. Yeah. Okay, they're building the prison of tomorrow. They're building that you will not be able to escape the universal ledger. You have the BRICS nations that met the last three days in uh, Russia with Putin. They've already gathered half the world to create one currency. That'll rival the dollar, and I understand why they want to do it. Mm-hmm. But from a spiritual perspective, as a Christian and a Muslim, I'd be like, wait, this is a little scary. Yeah. Because half of them are uniting then maybe the other half unite, and then eventually one currency, right? All we need is a cataclysmic event to destroy the world economy, whether it's World War III or Armageddon or whatever it is, 
to create the chaos to usher in a one world government, to usher in one currency that will completely enslave humanity into a subscription-based reality. Right. Mm. That is what is coming for all of us as you all enjoy your crypto and trade it. And they look at me like I'm stupid. And, they, and they're the ones that believe in the fairy tale of a Japanese wizard mm. who invented yeah. Bitcoin. Oh. Okay. Because they have to give you a cute story and let you make some money so you guys and girls get used to using this currency. Because if you knew it was going to lead to your enslavement, none of you would be trading it right now. None of you would be touching cryptocurrency. If you knew what comes 10 years to 20 years from now, you will remember this if they leave these videos on the internet. This will age mm -hmm. very well, I promise you. Yeah, I watched your video when you were talking about this. That is, yeah, very real. It's in, it's in Revelation as well. That no one should buy Trade or sell, or yeah. Anything without the mark of the beast. And from the Islamic perspective, we believe that when the Antichrist reveals himself, he will have control over the whole earth. Yeah. And that the believers in God, the righteous of God, and there will be Christians also that are righteous, that can see that this is the false Messiah, that they will literally chain their women and their children to chairs so they don't go out to follow the Antichrist. That's how powerful and deceptive this being will come at a time when, you got to remember, he comes when the world is in extreme chaos. Okay, when the world is probably the world as we know it is not here. You know, some people think maybe America and Russia wipe each other out. And, you know, America's not really spoken about in Revelation, right? Yeah. From any of those perspectives. It's nowhere even mentioned, right? And, you know, the way things are looking, you know, they're calling what happened, you know, this BRICS movement, right? For those of you that don't know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and then there's like another 30 countries that are joining, which represents 35% of the world's GDP. Okay. What's GDP? Gross domestic, uh, gross domestic product, the GDP of a nation, right? Their imports, exports, the money, right? 35% okay. of the world's GDP is going to be in that currency. Okay, which could topple the U.S. dollar, which would be catastrophic. Yeah. So the perfect storm is there. I think as a Christian, as a Muslim, you know, I think we can see the godlessness. It's the same for both. Both people that follow those faiths, if you actually have light in you, you can see there's something wrong with the world. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is not to make both of us agree on doctrine. Most Christians can't either. There's so many sects. Same thing in Islam. You have Sunni, Shiite, Sufi, right? You have all these different divisions, mm -hmm. okay? They don't agree on doctrine. They don't even agree on which Bible. No, I use the King James. No, I use the Douay Bible, okay? So let's let God judge us. What we all know is the Ten Commandments. What we all know is those values of man, wife, children, yeah. God. Don't lie to people. Don't steal. These are the same in all three of those religions. Don't commit murder. There is no collateral damage. Oh, God, I'm sorry. There was one terrorist there, but I blew up a building with 200 innocent people in it. I promise you, you're not going to have a defense on the day of judgment. You're not going to be able to tell God, well, there was one Hamas guy there, so I took out a whole building with women and children. Yeah. Because in Islam, you don't have that. Then you do you in Christianity. I know they don't have it in Judaism. Mm -hmm. But to not say there's not extremists in that faith also would be a lie. There's extremists in every single faith. There's none in that religion, really? You think they went through all that nightmare and all the Holocaust and all the oppression and they didn't have a group that was radicalized because of everything that happened to them? Really? Honestly, guys? Yeah. But we can't talk about it? My cousins in Texas are Jewish. My first cousins. My family. My people saved the Jews during the Holocaust. That's why I'm a very interesting person to speak about these subjects. Because you can't come at me with the, oh, he doesn't like Jews. No, I love them. That's why I'm advising them, you've gone too far. Yeah. You have lost the support of so many people that supported you before. You had 500 Jews arrested on Wall Street last week protesting against the counter response to what happened to them. Mm. Like, wake up because I really fear for them that they're opening a box that might lead to their destruction. The amount of innocent life that's being lost. No one's saying you didn't have a right to try to get your hostages, but it seems to be like that's not even the case anymore. I don't even think they care. Not the families of those people. But Bibi, I never hold the actions of a government to people. When I was younger, I was like that. You know, I lost 30 people in my family in 1998. They were massacred by the Serbian army in the, in the Kosovo War. That was the last war of the Yugoslav Wars. Yugoslavia was a country with different ethnicities. And then wars started in the early 90s and they finished with my people. 
So I lost about 28 people, okay, in a single day. First cousin was shot over 20 something times. I don't know how, how he survived. That's how I know that unless God says it's, it's your time, you're not going to die. Yeah. 28 bullets in his legs on top of a mountain being hunted down by the military. Wow. No food, no water, no medical attention with his arms, his leg tied around his neck with his belt, coming down a mountain, sometimes having to drop off of like cliffs for like 200 feet. And I got the mm -hmm. call. He was dead already. A week later, he turns up alive. People walked into the World Trade Center 10 minutes too early. They didn't come home. I'm going to go to work early. I believe in that divine wisdom. Yeah, we got free will, Jada. But the game board is rigged by God. Meaning, I couldn't control. Could you control to who you were born? No. You had no choice in that, right? right? That's where you were inserted into the simulation of this planet. Meaning the simulation that God created to try those of us that are righteous and those of us that are not. That's what this whole thing is. Yeah. This is the matrix that God created. Mm -hmm. So he puts you in with his divine wisdom where you're supposed to be that only he has the knowledge of pos to possess. Yeah. You have chosen with your free will how you're going to act, how you're going to respond. There's things that I didn't want to lose who I considered my brother, my mom's brother, but I call him my brother because people don't know the relationship. I loved him more than anyone. It'll be 11 years tomorrow that I lost him mm. in a car accident. It forever changed my life. It's a hole that will never be filled. It's a pain that never goes away. I didn't choose that event to happen, but I had to deal with it. Yeah. So the game board of life is rigged by the creator, by God. How we respond, that's our salvation. That is our right. Yeah. How are you preaching? I love listening to just those that are in their word and passionate about God because you can learn from anybody. I don't really believe in like, there's a lot of Christians who I believe who aren't, are just so like we want everybody to just be happy and they're not following their faith at all and then you can learn from a muslim you can learn from i learned from hebrew israelites actually that's how i got more passionate black israelites yeah that's how i got very really passionate pa very passionate and there's a lot of very valid claims of what they say yeah they are i mean i what learned about symbolism the tribes? there was 12 tribes right the religion today is called Juda judaism that's one was for example, from, from the Muslim Christian, it was called the children of Israel, the tribes of Israel. Yet yeah, the religion is named after one tribe. Right. Judea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. rest of the tribes. I don't Keep think fine. God chose any nation above any nation. He did choose the children of Israel, mm -hmm. the Israelites, to receive revelation. From our perspective, they started changing the books. They started killing the prophets. We believe that they tried to kill Christ. You believe they did. That's another, that's another difference between Muslims and Christians. We don't believe that Christ actually was the one on the cross. We believe the one who betrayed him was the one hung on that cross. Really? Yes. Wow. Which if, you know, and I gotta, that's not what this episode's about, but who knows, maybe in the future we do it. But for me, that made more sense in the sense because when you read like, you know, John 15 and John 16, you read Matthew 26, he's praying for help. If Jesus knew he's coming to die for me, why is he praying to be saved? If he's divine, who's he praying to? A God gets prayed to, a God doesn't pray. So these were things I had difficulty with accepting. And it's not to challenge you mm -hmm. on your show or your audience, but just that they want to stand my, my methodology to it. I love Jesus Christ. I believe he was born from the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary has her own chapter in the Holy Quran. She's the most important woman in Islam. And we have a different tradition about him, which I fell in love with, which was his first miracle. Like when I ask most Christians, what was Jesus' first miracle? So <laughs> I'll tell you what they'll say. They'll say he, you know, um, you know, brought people, you know, brought Lazarus back from the dead. He walked on water. He made wine, you know, out of water. He mm -hmm. blew into a clay pigeon. You know, they named those miracles. He cured the leper, right? Mm -hmm. These were like his, you know, miracles that everyone, you know, he was famous for. The Quran tells a different story says that his first miracle, and to me, I found it to be amazing. It's in the chapter, Mary. It's about the Virgin Mary. Peace and blessings be upon her. It says that when she was pregnant, because she was a virgin, she was not married. She was under lock and key for her own protection. Hmm. Because if the Israelites would have seen her pregnant without a husband, they would have stoned her to death for adultery. And because they knew her bloodline was the bloodline of Jacob, the prophet, peace be upon him, she was held to a much higher standard than anyone had been held of. 
right? She is from the ancestry of those prophets. Mm, okay. So when it's time for her to give birth, God commands her to go into the wilderness to deliver Christ, Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa, as they say in Islam. And it says in the Quran that she scrapes literally the bark off of a palm tree from the pain of delivering, you know, Christ. And then God commanded her. He's like, you're going to go back to the town, whether it was Bethlehem or wherever it was. He said, listen, when you go back to town, you will not speak to anyone. He told the Virgin Mary, you're not going to talk to anybody for three days. If anybody approaches you, if anybody attacks you, point to the baby, point to Jesus. So the Quran says, as she goes back to this town, the Israelites come out. Oh, Mary, what have you done? Have you done the most vile thing? How could you have a baby? You're not even mad. And they start, this mob, this is how the Quran describes it, hmm. starts gathering against the Virgin Mary to basically stone her to death and call in her every negative word you would call a woman. The S word, the word that rhymes with floor, starts with a W. Hmm. Okay, this is the image that's painted from our perspective. As this mob's building, she points to Christ. He's not even a couple of days old. And he says, do not attack my mother. For she is blessed in this life and the next. And I am the Messiah you wait for. They see this baby two, three days old talking. What would you do if you saw a two-year-old talking like a 30-year-old? They just parted like the Red Sea and moved out of Mary's way. From our perspective, his first miracle was to defend the honor of his mother. Wow. But in Matthew, you know, and, and so these things are like, okay, these are the differences between us, but we both love him, yeah. maybe in different ways. That's not enough for us to hate each other. And the only one that's winning is the devil. Yeah. Because if I was the devil, I would make Christians and Muslims go at it. Yeah. And now I got half the world that's supposed to believe in the God of Abraham in chaos. Yeah. And I can defile all of them. They don't want to tell the story of how the king of Abyssinia, ancient Abyssinia, modern Ethiopia, that these Christians that were righteous, the Negus, that's his name, N-E-G-U-S, that was the name for the ancient king of Ethiopia. In Arabic, it's pronounced the Najasi. When the first Muslims were being massacred and chased out of Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, go to this kingdom for there is a righteous man. He is a Christian. Now imagine the Prophet of Islam is telling his followers to seek safety to the Christians. What a beautiful story mm -hmm. that is never shared to wow. build love between the Christian and the Muslim. How could Islam teach Muslims that Christians are the infidel when the Prophet Muhammad said to go to them in your time of need. Mm -hmm. And when the Arabs that were pagan tried to come and take those first Muslims away from the kingdom of that Christian king, he said, I wouldn't give you these men if you give me all the gold in the world. Now, is that a story that's going to make someone love a Christian or hate them? Love. And is that something that's going to make a Christian hate a Muslim or love them? Love. But they don't tell you these stories. Yeah. They don't tell you that a predominantly Muslim country was the one that saved almost every Jew that came to them in, in World War II, which was Albania. Mm -hmm. Albanians are very secular, but predominantly Muslim. They've never made a movie about that. Imagine now, there's a country that not a single Jew died in World War II. How many World War II movies have you seen? Thousands of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hitler sneezed. Five people survived. Movie. Right. They've even made movies that are comical, like... The one with, what was it, Brad Pitt, where they're going crazy? It was like comical almost. They lock Hitler in the movie theater and they set everybody on fire at the last scene. I mean, no, I didn't watch yeah, that Yeah, it was uh, Inglorious Bastards. or what, I forgot what it was. But this is a movie that's actually a true story mm -hmm. that's never told. Yeah. Because why show that Muslims and Jews can get along? Yeah. You see where I'm going with all that? No, I so think that, that's So that's the essence of my work. It's not about believe what I believe. I tell people I could be wrong. Please double check what I'm telling you. When you give information to people, you have a responsibility. Yeah. Because if I teach you something wrong you. and you take it for truth, I'm liable to the creator for that. So please, even your audience, listen, I'm not saying believe what I believe. God gave you a brain. God gave you a heart. God gave you a mind. And I believe God guides you. If you're looking for the truth, you're going to find it. Right. I studied every faith on earth. 
No one. T- I don't come from a religious family. My family was against me when I started becoming religious. They were calling me every name in the book. You're crazy. You're this. You're that. You're becoming an Arab. You're becoming a terror. Like yeah. they were scared because it's the same thing in Christian. When you become reborn, yeah, they, and your family's not, they're like, "Hey, you're becoming a little too religious." Hey, mm-hmm. you're, I'm sure you might have experienced that as you became more spiritual. So every time you start to go towards God, the devil's gonna hit you. When he can't get you, he goes around you. He attacks the people near you. You got to know how the demonic realm works. Yeah. So everything's going good. It's when you go towards God, the devil hits you. Mm-hmm. Your boss, you should fire her. You know what? You should get rid of You start whispering. That's what the demons do. They whisper. When they can't get you, they go to everyone else around you. That's how you have to understand how this simulation works. Ooh, yeah, that, we got to talk about that. Demonic. Yeah, the demonic realm. I was watching your video on that, and 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 that's something. Those went very viral. Yeah. Yeah, in my household, we talk about that a lot. Um, it's real. Zero. Yeah, the scripture of like you don't wrestle with flesh and blood, and I and I like how you broke things down. You gave a de- you gave an interesting perspective about demons and what you believe demons are, and that they were here long. And that I learned that from some Hebrew Israelites too that they were here long they before. Were here long, yeah, but even before. the Christian perspective. Yeah, the Christian. They were perspective. here before. The devil was made before humanity. Yeah. Right. That species. And they're here whispering to us. Had free will, yeah, and they were here before us. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's similarity here between those three fates, and there's some differences. I would say the Jewish perspective and the Muslim perspective is a little closer on that one, where the Christians kind of take the fallen angel approach, which didn't make sense to me. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I believe uh, angels are a creation of light mm-hmm. that God made from light. He made them from a smokeless flame. Mm-hmm. the demonic realm and he made us from the colors of the earth and if you look at our skin it really is sand and dark mud and dark clay the red clay that the native americans you know like we literally look you could see it's the colors of the earth yeah so you know they say you know i gotta remember one thing mm-hmm. jesus spoke aramaic mm-hmm. some blessings be upon him yes from aramaic it went into conic greek not used today from Koenig Greek into Latin, not used. So we're already two different languages, then into English, then into Spanish, then into Italian. As an Albanian, if I said to you in Albanian, oh, may I eat your heart? So I just say to you, hey, Jada, may I eat your heart? What, what's, what comes to your mind? How do you interpret that? <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy, right? <laughs> now, I swear to God, in my Albanian audience, they're going to drop comments here. I'm going to, tra- I translated it word for word. May I, Jada, may I eat your heart? That's exactly what we but do. But you know what it means in words. Albanian? Hmm. That expression, tahong shazamran, means like, if I see my kid and they do something cute, I'm like, oh, may I eat your heart? Like, it's a sign of endearment. Wow, yeah. Okay? It's not, I'm a cannibal. It means like, I love you so much, I just want to eat your heart. Like, I love you. Mm-hmm. Or if I see this gorgeous woman and I say, oh, tahong shazamran, like, oof. Like, she knows that, wow, he's very attracted to me. Like. Mm. But I translated it word from word, Jada, from Albanian to English. It lost its meaning completely. Mm-hmm. And I would beg the Christian to go deep into your studies. Yeah. No, I definitely, yeah. You know, he didn't speak English. And that's another thing that unites us. I'm the one that broke the internet. Billions of views. Mm-hmm. The first video I made to unite Christians and Jews and Muslims, it said, you idiots are cursing people out. F this and F Allah. I'm like, okay. What language did Jesus speak? Exactly. Aramaic. Basically. I like that video. Google the word for God in Aramaic. It was Allah. It's a cognate. That is a word that is the same in multiple languages. Yeah. Because they are Semitic languages. And I got a newsflash for you people. Palestinians are Semitic. They're Arabs. Arabs are Semitic. Hebrews are Semitic. Ethiopians are Semitic. There's many Semitic people. Mm -hmm. Just like you have Latin-based languages, you have Portuguese, you have Spanish, Italian, you have Slavic, Russian, right? Yeah. And those languages, Georgian and Ukrainian, these are Slavic languages, Serbian. So you're reading a book that's been translated, multiple translations, multiple languages. We're playing for keeps based on the Christian perspective, based on the Muslim perspective. You better dig deep. Go deep. Yeah. Like... I think God will have mercy, even if we're wrong, because he ju- judges based on intention. If I looked, and he knows your capacity too, mm-hmm. but he also knows if you're more interested in just looking at your phone and looking at OnlyFans and swiping TikTok and you didn't make any effort to look for him, I don't think you're going to have the right to say, well, I didn't know, God. But if yeah. you actually made the effort, you tried to study, you tried to find God, maybe, maybe you slipped. 
You know, maybe you chose the wrong faith. We could both be wrong. Who knows? Yeah. Right? I think he'll, God will have mercy because he knows the intention. God, I looked for you. I looked for you. I really thought this was the door, but I don't think he'll forgive the ones that didn't look, didn't practice, didn't try to help people, didn't try to do what's right. I believe God is the most merciful. I believe God does guide people, and I believe that you have to look for him. You have to make pure intention. Yeah. Whether you're a Christian, Jew, or a Muslim, or, or any faith, you have to make true intention and look for God. And maybe he'll give some slack to those that looked for him and maybe didn't choose the right. I'm, I'm praying that's what it is for me. I, I looked for him. Yeah. I didn't sit there waiting. Everyone was against me. I didn't just choose my faith. I studied and I chose, and I hope I chose right. I believe I did for myself. But I hope if I'm wrong, he'll say, you know what? You tried your best. You looked. I know you looked. I don't think he would condemn me to hell. Mm -hmm. I would hope not. And I would hope he wouldn't do the same for, for my Christian. But he does. He says in the book, if you follow what they brought you, he says it in the Quran, Christian, Jew, Sabian. If you follow what your messengers brought you, your salvation is still with your Lord. And I love that about my faith. Mm -hmm. He said that even they have salvation if they follow what Christ brought. So that's a whole nother argument. Yeah. That's another, you know, another debate, but we have so much in common and to be at each other's throats because the media tells us to, because Hollywood films that have never shown a Middle Eastern person as a civilized human being ever, yeah. it's either very violent and aggressive or comical. So you don't feel bad when they're dropping bombs on them. Like most people don't now, they're actually cheering it on. Mm. You dehumanize them. That's what's going on, Jada. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, though, like even for myself. I mean, I've never I've never had questions like that. Like, I just don't. I sought out God. I was pretty kind of atheist just in the world. Um, the world I don't blame the honestly, I, I feel for them. I really do. Most atheists. They're just seeking uh, answers. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, they're really good people. Most of them, mm -hmm. except for the commies. Okay, they weren't good. They were bad atheists. But the atheists that I know are like people that are actually like very soft. Shout out to my cousin Rick. I love him. They feel let down by God. You know, they don't truly understand the concept of divine wisdom. Yeah. So they, you know, and I, I understand their argument. You know, well, if there's a God, how's he let this happen? Yeah. You know, why did he let African Americans be enslaved? Why did he let the Holocaust happen? Um, why is he going to send people to hell forever? Yeah, a lot of you know, questions. Yeah. You know, what, what kind of God does that? You know, it sounds like <laughs> we're not on his level. No, yeah. Okay. We're not on his level. You know, one of my favorite stories, and I don't know if we have time for it, but one of my favorite stories, for example, from our perspective is in the chapter, The Cave in the Quran. And it talks about how Moses, peace be upon him. Now, Moses is on a very important mission, right? He's one of the most important. He is the most mentioned. I made a mistake on one podcast. You guys killed me, okay? It's hard to retain all this information, all right? <laughs> um, he is the most mentioned prophet in, in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the second most mentioned. But Moses is against Pharaoh. Pharaoh was an oppressor. His own mom and his own brother, Aaron, name of one of my children that I gave him with, that's actually his name, because I want them to know that they live in a time where they need to remember that they're from they're men of God. Yeah. It's very important, the name you give your child. There's a psychology to that. Yeah. You know, someone went up to the prophet and said, you know, hey, he's like, hey, what's your name? He's like, his name in Arabic meant war. You know, his name was Harp. So the prophet, peace be upon him, said, I feel very sorry for you. And they didn't understand why he said that, but it made sense. Because if I'm a child and I think my name's war, my psyche is war. Because subconsciously, war, war, war. I got to be war. Yeah. Right? That's why a lot of Arabs, for example, in, you know, they have the names like Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahim. Ab Abd means slave, slave of God, slave of the most wise, slave of the most merciful. Those are the attributes of God, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a reminder to I'm a slave of God. I should be righteous. Mm. That doesn't mean they are. Yeah. But subconsciously, you have to be near the, the intention you give with a name is very important to your child, you know? Okay. We have a lot of hours to get here, Jay. I know, I know. And I really want to talk with you about this one just because, well, first and foremost, thank you for sharing all of that because it's really important and I'm excited to use my platform to share everything that you just said, especially as I talk more about uh, my faith and bringing up the Bible and things like that. I want to just 
utilize my platform to bring thing, peace by with the that. Way. Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of the Antichrist, we believe in our faith that there is a division of Christians and Muslims that unite towards the end of time to fight him. Mm. So remember, there's a lot of denominations in Christianity and there's a lot in Islam too now, right? Mm-hmm. We believe towards the end of time, those that were on the true path, the true Christians and the true Muslims, they unite to fight the Antichrist. Mm. That's beautiful. No, I, I, uh, that- I hope we're not here. I've always prayed my whole life. If he's coming, God, take me. Yeah. Because you don't know if you're going to pass that test. Yeah. And if you don't pass that test, yeah, you go to hell forever. Yeah. Because you associate with God that which has no right to be associated, Jade. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I think about that a lot. And actually, I I, I, uh, prayed. I said, God, if if a gun is pointed to my head and, you know, I'm asked that question that I will be able to die, you know, for you. And Yeah, the prophet said you have to choose between fire or water. His fire, if you, because he's going to basically, you're a believer. He gives you the choice of, he, the Antichrist, gives you a choice of fire or water. The prophet said if he, if you should come upon him, mm-hmm. jump into the fire, which is going to wow. be hard to do because you're going to see whatever, whatever that means. It could be a machine gun to your head, whatever it is. Yeah. He's like, but don't fall. Yeah, don't. Because if you jump into what he promises, you know, because remember, people are going to be starving, no food, no water, chaos. He's going to be able to control the weather, literally, which I think they're already doing, if we're being real. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of chemtrails over the skies of Texas. I thought Texas was safe, but no, you guys have a lot of chemtrails. I saw them all day today driving from Dallas. Wow. It's real. I just moved out here. but Cali all day, New York all day. If you just look up at the skies, people. I promise you, it's not a conspiracy. Just look up and pay attention. Mm-hmm. The lines don't move. Well, yeah. I think at this point, you're just, you're just, with the rise of technology, there's so much right in front of your but face. They admitted it already a few times that yeah. they are trying to reflect the sun's light. The sun looks dimmer to us these days. I don't know if you know, I know. I've said it so many times, like the sun just doesn't, it doesn't seem to be shining like it used to. Like, mm-hmm. It doesn't. There's like a few shades lighter than what I remember, as vivid as I remember it. Right, exactly. So I want to get into this real quick, too, because since on my platform, I really talk about um, feminism, single mother households, fatherless homes, and I really push that, um, trying to be more of like a teacher for women and just share, like, we're being really deceived. Um, I love the clip, the viral clip of you talking about a generation of bastards. And I and know I you brought it up. to put them down. No, but like, d- you said Game of Thrones. What do they call Jon Snow? It was the an bastard. insult. A it- bastard. He had no right to be legitimate because, you know, it was like that forever. Listen, 40 years ago, mm-hmm. even in Albania, if someone called you a copil, that's how you say bastard in Albania, they would mm-hmm. break your jaw. They might even shoot you. It was that much of an insult. Yeah. But it's not an insult no more because 60% of the children out there today are bastards. Yeah. And they're the ones that are committing these violent crimes, okay? Because they have, they were never shown love, Jada. Yeah. And these moms, because their heart's broken, because they give the prize to the man up front. You want to know if a man loves you? He'll wait for you. Oh, silly. It's not, let me sleep with him after the third date or a month or six months. The old ways are what protected you. Yes. From those that didn't have the right intentions for you. But because so many of these women don't even have fathers themselves and brothers, because if someone looked at my sister, I'd have put them in the cemetery. I'm telling you. Yeah. I was the happiest and saddest day of my life is when she got married. My duty was over. But Mm. I was also sad that she was leaving, you know, my protection, you know? But thank God she married an amazing man and they've been together a very long time and four kids and, you know, it worked out. But I cried for two weeks when my sister got married. I was crying at work. People like, what's wrong with you? Like, my sister got married. Like, you should be happy. I'm like, man, you just don't get it. Mm -hmm. You know? So the problem is people are just giving up the most precious thing, their temple, their body. Yeah. I'm not sitting here saying I was an angel as a young man. And I should have done better. And I'm ashamed of my past. I'm not proud of it at all. There was a time where I was proud of it. Yeah. As a young man, right? As a stupid idiot. And then you realize really how life works and your soul works and your heart works. 
And we're really in a in a deadbeat society. Most people's hearts are harder than rocks. Yeah. They feel nothing. And it's because of these excesses. Nothing. It's because of these sins. It's because of lust. It's because of alcohol. It's because of drugs. It's because of what's entering what they would call a third eye, what you're watching, what you're listening to. And we are breeding a generation of bastards who are now returning the favor through violence, through creating more bastards, and we are degenerating, just like Babylon, just like Rome, well, just like the, all the great civilizations that collapsed. They had the same diseases of the heart. And we believe, just like you, as Christians and Muslims, that we're not gonna get any more chances. God gave us a chance. And because, like I said earlier, we all have this spiritual disease that is spreading throughout the entire earth, is why I believe we are entering the final time for humanity. Because this sickness has spread across the globe. It's not just one pocket or two pockets. Yeah. And so I know that you guys also have, I'm believing, the story of Cain and Abel as well. Correct. And I, again, I, I get a lot of comments from like women. Why do you only talk about what women are supposed to do? Why don't you talk about what men are supposed to do? And I try to refrain from doing that because I feel like um, men, strong men, should tell other men how to be strong. And so that's why I like bringing on what I believe are strong men when I listen to you guys talk. It's fascinating. I learned so much and all of your wisdom. I feel like bringing you guys on to share with young men how to be strong. And I heard this thing. I wanted your thoughts on it, that what men are struggling with is also the um, sins of Cain. Just like women are struggling with the sins of Eve, and I share that, like, you know, she went against her husband's will. We all know that story. It's a very common story. But I, it was very interesting to me with the anger and the violence that men do. do. And women always love to talk about that. Men are so violent. That's why the feminist movement wants to, like, bash them and bash their masculinity. But I think they might be dealing with um, the the spirit of Cain. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that or what men are dealing with when personally. When Cain and Abel's children mixed, we all got some of their traits. And they mixed through music. You did? Okay. I, saw, I watched a video about that. Because yeah. the first children of Adam, you know, they lived upon the mountaintops. And when Cain killed Abel, he went down from the mountains. And Adam, peace be upon him, the first human being, commanded the rest of the children to never go down from the mountain and to mix with Cain's children. Mm. The weekend has been going on since day one on this planet for us. Literally. The gathering once a week to dance and mingle the sexes was inspired through music, through the demonic realm. Satan shapeshifts. He has the power to do that, you know? He shapeshifted and went amongst the children of Cain and started teaching them how to bang on instruments and make music. And once a week, the children of Cain would gather around the fire and dance. And it was, I think their women were better looking than the women of Cain, of, of uh, Abel. Abel's, oh. And the men were better looking from Abel's side. So what happened eventually was they would hear the music once a week and they went down from the mountaintop and they, they locked the eyes and that was it. They were like, damn, those girls are hot. Damn, that guy's hot. And boom. So we have all of those traits in us. But the commingling of that good and evil came through the invention of music. I'm not going to sit here and say all music is evil. And most of Islam, they forbid, is, you know, they forbid music. Really? I tend, yeah, they forbid it. Let's think about it. What it does to Let's your... be real. Let's yeah. be real. Watch a movie with no music. I promise you, I don't care how bad it is, you're not going to cry. You're not going to get scared as much. Mm -hmm. You're just not. It, it heightens the effect. Why is it the minute we hear a little, doom, 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 we just start doing all We just start freaking out, yeah. We just start doing weird, like... You don't think it's funny when we just start going like this and dancing and like it's just it's funny. All of a sudden a sound comes on, we're like, hey, hey, look at me. Hey, like, yeah. But let's be real. How much lust comes from it? Yeah. Let's be real. That mean, and then the music of today, F him and I get some money. Mm -hmm. Not even off him and I get a husband and I get love. No, just F him and I get money. Yeah. Let me just basically sell my soul. Let me give the most sacred object I have, my body, my temple, my psyche. Yeah my spiritual essence that I can't even see and most people don't even understand. Can you break it down? The more you sin, the more numb you become. Your heart dies. You add intoxicants into that, it's even easier and it happens quicker. You degenerate. And I know because I was on that side also. 
right? I was in nightlife for 25 years. Mm-hmm. I didn't always drink, and I haven't drank in over 11 years. And I didn't stop because I was necessarily an alcoholic, but I, I lost people to alcohol. Mm-hmm. And it destroyed their families, it destroyed everyone. Most people have done things they regret when they drink alcohol. Yeah. And the reason why we don't drink alcohol is because, let's be real, I dare you to open up your AA app, meaning download AA app, even if you're not an alcoholic, and just look at how many meetings are going on in your neighborhood every couple of hours. That's what kind of a plague it is on society. And because so many of our fellow human beings can't handle alcohol is why it's forbidden in our faith. Meaning, yeah, me and you might be able to have a glass of wine, but let's be real. You had a guy almost take out Kamala Harris yesterday. He drove on the wrong side of the highway, drunk, really? through her motorcade. I covered this on my podcast. Oh, wow. Okay? I've lost so many people I know to drunk driving, or they beat their wife, or whatever the case may be. Slept with someone they didn't want to. Let's be real. They also are doing it, so people are doing it to feel numb. They don't know that the answer they need is in prayer. All this pain, all this suffering, all this numbness that you feel, you're only prolonging the inevitable, your destruction. You want to get rid of that pain? You want to get rid of that emptiness? Get on those damn knees and worship the one that created you. Ask that creator to guide you. And I promise you that that creator will guide you. Regardless of your faith denomination, call upon God with all your heart, sincerity, submit. Let go of your ego. Let go of your trauma for a second. Most people can't stand to be in, in silence even for a moment. Yeah. They're scared to even be alone with their own thoughts. Most people, when they meditate, start having anxiety. Yeah. That's how far away from your soul you are. Yeah. You're only in the anim- animalistic side of your being, right? Mind, soul, animal. We're made from the same material as donkeys and apes, mm-hmm. the same material. But what separates us is our essence. Mm-hmm the soul that God put into us, the intellect that he gave us. If a human being only follows their desires, they are lower than the donkeys. Because that's why God told the angels to bow to Adam. Because when a human being follows the creator from their own will, an angel can only do what God commands it to do. But when a human being acts upon its free will in accordance with the one that gave it life, it's higher than all of creation because the human being the child of adam chooses to follow the creator Mm -hmm. in essence he puts his desires aside to worship the one god and that's also how i address you know the lgbtq i do not hate them i love i have many friends but if i'm gonna be real i'm gonna be real Mm -hmm. okay you're born like that all right cool let's say they are cool I believe God gives everyone their own test. I had a cousin that was born that couldn't move a muscle in his body his entire life. He only lived to the age of 21. He lived in agonizing pain his entire life. Mm -hmm. Never walked, never spoke, never nothing. Was that fair? No, but that was the challenge that God gave him. You were born attracted to, you know, the same sex? From the spiritual perspective, how we explain it is, that's your test. But also, a heterosexual couple or a man who's having prohibited sex, meaning out of wedlock, is no no worse or no better than someone practicing on the same sex. It's yeah. still an abomination in the eyes of creators. So I mean, people don't know how to explain this to them. Yeah. Lust is lust. Whether it's man and man, man and woman, mm-hmm. both of those are evil to God and they're slightly different, but the same level of destruction. Right. You're acting upon your lust. So either you believe in God or not, you believe in the creator or not. Okay, you're attracted that way. It's either one of three things, in my opinion. Either A, something happened to them, yeah. which a lot of them did. Yeah, That's a high fact. percentage, yeah. Okay, all my friends, at least 20, 30 years ago. But what's become dangerous in the last 40 years is now it's becoming a lie because people think it's, it's okay. Yeah. And again, that's you. You want to do that? It's growing, too, in the- Curiosity. And then you drink, hey, try this. You know, put this finger in you, you know, it just gets a little crazy, you know? (laughs) So what I'm saying is my take on it is, okay, you're born like that? Cool. That's the test that God gave you. Someone's born blind. Someone's born with no legs. Someone's, he created this simulation. 
It is us to not act like the animals, to not follow our desires. That's what this entire simulation is. What I mean by that, I'm not saying like these people think we're in a computer program. The simulation that God created us, he created this world to test us. Mm -hmm. Which will be the best? Which will be the worst? Listen, there's plenty of men that practice their lust on women. They are no better or no worse than someone that does it with men. Men and men. Same, you're failing the same test. You understand? Except yeah. Instead of doing it man and woman, you're doing man and man. It's you not having control. Yeah. You following your desire. Yeah. Okay? Dying to self. Listen, sure. most straight men, let's be real. When it be real, most straight men would sleep with a thousand women if they could. And they wouldn't think twice about it. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when a woman walks by, the first thing they're doing is undressing her with their eyes. That's a fact. Unless they're lying to you. It's the way they were designed. Mm -hmm. They see her and then when they wear tight clothes and it's even easier. There's less left to the imagination. Everything is sexualized. So that's why we have now this generation of lust, which led to a generation of bastards, which led to the chaos that we have and is only going to continue to grow. The degeneracy is only going to continue to expand globally. And now in some of the most traditional societies, the Arab world, Eastern Europe, Asia, turn on the channels, watch their TV. They look like us. They dress like us. They dance like us. They make their music in Korean K-pop, singing about the same garbage that we do. That's how I know we're in the end of time. Yeah. One disgusting virus that has spread throughout the whole world. We're becoming one blob globally of spiritually devoid people with no deep understanding or critical thinking or reflection onto why we're on this earth and what is truly our purpose. It's not just to eat, drink, suck, and you know what? Mm -hmm. And amass wealth that you can't take with you. You know, you would think most people, after you put a few people in the ground, because that's what always woke me up. And I buried some very rich people in my life. Mm -hmm. I washed some people's bodies before burial where I was cutting off their Pradas and their suits and taking off Rolexes off their arms. And I'm saying he was so proud of all this, but it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's here and you're gone. All this shit that you were proud of. Sorry. <laughs> all these things that you were proud of, the Ferraris, the, the, the gold, the Rolexes, the, 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 the suits. You didn't take any of it with you. I watched it go to other people, to strangers or living in your house that you were so arrogant over. Yeah. And you didn't help nobody. And God gave you these blessings. You, the problem is most people think, no, no, I mean, I know people who are the smartest people on earth who work harder than anybody and they're broke. Not because they're stupid. Yeah. They don't have, they're just not lucky. No, God didn't open the doors for them. I know morons that are billionaires. But sometimes they think that that wealth's a blessing. It's not. The hardest test to pass is the blessing of wealth. Because when you're comfortable, mm. it's harder to need God. God loves the poor. Why? Because they constantly have to call upon him. God, help me get through this day, please, God. And it's through that lack, it's through that scarcity that you're more connected to source. Yeah. And you have less to fall into temptation with, less to destroy your life with. This life is a joke. I'm 42. I already can tell the rest of my life will not be as interesting and as fun as the last 40 years of my life. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. All that excitement, the luster of life. For those of you that are 20 years old right now watching this, I promise you're not missing nothing. I was the king of New York nightlife. King of nightlife in New York. I still am. Mm -hmm. I can walk into any nightclub from here to LA. I walk in like a king. I don't drink. Sometimes I go. I'm not going to say and lie to my audience. I got people I have to entertain sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know? I got to go visit. Hey, I'm here. I'm like, really? But I got to go. Yeah. Or they want to go. And I'll make a call. But, you know, people want to judge. Even my own people want to judge me. No one has a right to judge anyone. Yeah. God is my judge. I got Muslims that say, I, I love this about you, but you're not my judge. I know I'm not perfect. I know God is merciful. I know I love him with all my heart. I know I've let him down a million times. I pray every day of my life, please don't let me fall. Please don't let me, when that clock runs out, because eventually it's your last breath, please. I believe it's a back and forth. It's that battle within. Mm -hmm. That's literally what jihad is, by the way. That's the primary definition, the struggle within against the evil that's within you. Yeah, There's good and bad in all of us. We can listen to those voices or we can listen to the voices that come from, from God, the angelic, moving towards being as perfect as you can as a human being. Right. So many of us, we fall into despair. We judge ourselves. We don't even have a right to do that. 
We write ourselves off. I did this. God can't love me. Mm. <clears throat> I did this wrong. God can't love me. <clears throat> no. No matter what you've been through, no matter how much darkness you've done, if you're still alive, he still loves you. He still gave you time because if he didn't, he'd take you right now. Yeah. He's still giving you a chance every breath. I don't care. How, I don't care if you killed a hundred people. I mean, yeah, it's really bad. But again, I'm not God. Mm -hmm. You can possibly be forgiven. Yeah. You have to do a lot of homework, a lot of making up for that. But, you know, God is the one, man. I can't, who am I to judge? Mm -hmm. I don't have a right to judge. You know, I've judged people before in relationships. I've gone through some very hard times in relationships because of that, judging people, you know, based on their things that they did wrong. And it's hard sometimes to put your hand on your heart, especially men, because, you know, most alpha conservative males, women with high body counts, it's a very hard pill to swallow. Yeah. It's just a very hard pill to swallow. To know, because to us, it's like the woman is being entered. I'm sorry. She's the one being penetrated. Like she's the one being submissive in that moment, allowing a man to do whatever he wants to her. Dominate her, yeah. Yeah, some of them, you know, yeah, they think in their minds, but let's be real. It's the man that is the alpha in that situation. It's the man who is releasing fluid in that situation. There's a lot, and not to be graphic. Yeah, but he's conquering her. But it's hard to know that you're with a woman that's been taken by... God knows how many men. Yeah. That's a hard pill to swallow. And you as a woman, you shouldn't be impressed because you could literally go outside, and I promise you, in seconds, which is why God gave you that power. And it's because you guys let go of that power, the world is in chaos. You thought you didn't have the power. Yeah. No, you had the power. You were literally the key to all of civilization and society. Wow. Okay? You women really were the ones with the power. You just didn't realize. It. You didn't like your role because you were tripped into thinking, oh, no, I want to be like the men. Yeah. You're the reason. And I, I'm not letting the men off the hook. Because just because a woman's allowing herself to be degraded, in my opinion, doesn't mean you should act upon that. Yeah. Just because she's giving you access. And I'm not sitting here saying I was an angel, I was perfect. But there are women out there who know that I dated them. If they weren't touched, I didn't touch them. You know, there was women in my past that had never been with anyone. I said, I will be damned if I'm the first. I don't have a right to do that to you. Mm. If someone went with other men? I'm saying when I, when I wasn't on the right path. You understand what I'm trying yeah. to say to you? No, they show, I mean, they show that in, they I show was like, that I don't have a history. right to tear. If I don't know I'm going to be with this woman the rest of my life, I'm not taking that from her. And I didn't. Yeah, and unless people, you marry her. And most people, that's how I grew up. I grew yeah. up believing, you know, from the Albanian culture from the Muslim culture and even the strict Christian culture. Yeah. You just to wait. And I'll be honest with you. You get used to it. It's for the men too. You degenerate. Pornography. You're going to degenerate. You're not going to be able to have a normal relationship. Okay? You're going to have graphic images in your mind. You're going to have unreal expectations. You might even get retroactive jealousy because you watch these videos and then you're like, well, I know my girlfriend had 10 guys before me and this is the stuff they were doing. Those images will trigger that type of stuff in you. Yeah which I think destroys a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. It's filth. It's disgusting. You know, we're going to pay a heavy price for that. You know, what, what people need to realize, if you're a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew, you cannot look at pornography. Why? Because God's going to judge you as if you were there doing it with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The eyes are the window to the soul. You sitting there, it's like you're in a room. It doesn't matter that you're physically not there. It's like you're sitting there watching this stuff. Yeah. You are witnessing adultery. You will be judged like they are, even though you're not getting the physical pleasure. You might be pleasuring yourself with your hand or whatever. You're going to pay the price like you're that woman, like you're that man in that video. Yeah. I don't think people understand that. It destroys the world. Another thing most men don't understand, and this is where I got to go on the men now, right? Because I got to be fair. Yeah. Just because prostitution is legal in Europe doesn't mean that those women are not trafficked. They are trafficked. When you go to Germany and you have saunas, you can pay $75 to walk in. Mm. They give you a robe. You can eat literally a buffet. They feed you first. And then you have 100 women from all over the world for $100 for one hour. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than having dinner in Germany in Amsterdam. Wow. I swear to God, it's cheaper than going to a nice restaurant. 
So that's why their birth rate is in decline. Their men are not getting married. And their population, that's why they needed the migrants, the migrants that they hate so much because they can't even sustain their own populations anymore in Europe because of their brothels, because of pornography. Wow. And the same is happening to the American. And now they're like, well, how come the Muslims are taking over now? <laughs> because you guys don't want to have kids. You guys don't want to get married. Christian nations. Europe, technically, right? Mm -hmm. Germany, Switzerland, all these countries that are Christian. They want to make these strict laws against Muslim women covering, like the Virgin Mary, by the way. The hypocrisy, mm -hmm. the contradictions. Because mm -hmm. you as a Christian, you see a Muslim woman, you hate her because the way she's dressed, and you better go take down those pictures that you shouldn't have anyway, in my opinion, because there should be no images or statues or idols if we're all following the Ten Commandments. But mm -hmm. if you're going to judge that Muslim woman for being modest and dressing like the Virgin Mary, peace be upon her, then you're a hypocrite as a Christian. Yeah. You are a clown. Yeah. Because that's who they're emulating. The most righteous woman to ever walk the earth, the Virgin Mary, peace and blessings be upon her. That's a Muslim saying that. Mm -hmm. That's what we have in common. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with my like relationship, marriage, the honor, right? Yes. We're the same in that capacity. Jesus will judge me and you. Yeah. Who was wrong? Who lied? Yeah. Until then, let's focus on these evil, yeah. godless, defiling, degenerating, the whole world, people and leaders. Yeah. And let's protect our values that are the same. Mm -hmm. And because we live in America, you have the right to practice your faith and I faith. And, and we know, like I said earlier, the Huguenots, the Protestants, they were killing each other for centuries in Europe. Both Christian. You have two Orthodox nations killing each other right now. Ukraine and Russia. Right? So that's not the answer either, right? So what does that mean? That means, hey, all of us that have these ideals, that believe in Moses, believe in Abraham, peace be upon them. Yeah. John the Baptist, peace be upon him. He's also mentioned in the Holy Quran. We love John the Baptist. He lost his life. He was beheaded yeah for speaking the truth these are the people we love the virgin mary mm -hmm. okay you guys don't recognize muhammad cool but up until jesus hey we're on the same page mm -hmm. the values are the same yeah at least muslims believe in jesus and you guys hate him like it's it's just it's just crazy to me mm -hmm. you know the what division. i mean yeah but like i said division, division is, is in islam also you had sunni and shiite kill each other Iran versus Iraq, millions died. So, like, I want to always be fair. Yeah. And not be like, oh, Muslim. No, there's darkness there, too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, too. No, I definitely agree. Got to be fair. Yeah. I've, I've heard of, I've heard of, I guess I haven't seen it just because my husband, he's half Middle Eastern. He's half uh, Arabian and, um, and his family and stuff there. I hope you have access to that food because it's delicious. No. They're very. What's his name? <laughs> Marquise. Some kofta, some kebabs, some hummus. Come on, brother. <laughs> Most people didn't even know what a Muslim was before 9 11. Yeah. Let's be real. In America, they were like, well, you're a Muslim? Yeah. Like, especially in Texas, you a Muslim? Yeah, I didn't even know. I, I really didn't recognize it because I was always fascinated by how much they are dedicated to God, to their religion, you far more than. Check, man. Five they times do. a day, it's hard to like plan a robbery you know they the muslims do. make a joke like we woke up in the morning we're gonna rob a bank oh it's time to pray all right we'll do it at noon it's time to pray mm -hmm. all right we'll Very do it at three o'clock it's time to pray like it keeps you in check because honestly i, I know when i'm on it and it's not easy i yeah. fall like listen i'm not gonna say until every single day you're supposed to mm -hmm. five times a day when i was in that mode mm -hmm. i swear to god you can ask most like polite soft yeah you know I'm still a man but soft Mm -hmm. very merciful very kind because I'm in check I'm being held down stupid thought that is my mind now it's time to pray I'm constantly rebalancing and reconnecting with source yeah and the same way Christ prayed Matthew chapter 26 yeah, he teaches verses us. 36 through 39 and I quote going a little further he fell with his face to the ground and prayed mm -hmm. oh my father if this trouble can pass me not as I will but as thou will. Yeah. What's he doing there, by the way? He's submitting his will. To who? To the Father. Yes. That's what the definition of a Muslim is. One who submits their will to God. Yeah. Literally. 
No, and it's it's quite inspiring. Um, well, you prayed how? Face down the ground. Yeah. We got more in common. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on these evil, godless, destroying everything that has any type of morality. Yeah, agree. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine Christians and Muslims? They're saying, "Listen, no beef. Let's just be on the same page." I know it's not us. It's the powers that be that make us hate each other. Yeah. It's the leaders that really they're not Christian, Muslim, or Jewish, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Any of them. Like none of them. I don't care if you see them praying and this and that. And meanwhile, they're pushing these agendas that destroy what's in your womb. Yeah. Yep. Destroy your kids at school. Destroy the concept of marriage. Destroy the nuclear family. Allow filth into your food. Yeah. Filth into your ears. Filth on your TV. What we watch on TV today would have been X-rated when I was 15 years old. Yeah. We'd have to pay for pay-per-view to watch it. A good leader will protect his uh, people from all of I pray to God that God sends us someone soon. Otherwise, I think the only person coming to help all of us is Christ. Christ, yeah. I don't think anyone's saving anybody. I agree. I think Jesus is the only one that's going to save us. That's, now, it, do you find it weird when a Muslim saying this? Yeah? No, I, I don't. It's funny, right? Because but I, that's what we believe. Well, I've heard I've heard the saying, a good Christian is a Muslim, a good Muslim is a Christian. Thank you. Yeah. So where it's it. And down with the new world and order. And my, my. Down with the new world order. I love it. <laughs> this is a prototype. So my last question, and then we'll wrap up. I want to go back to what you said about women had the key to everything. Uh, and I, I heard, man, they just didn't realize. Well, they, I, I heard, I was watching, and I want to get your insight and opinion on just to motivate women and women that are watching this and listening to you and how you'll word it or how you'll put it together to give them a new perspective that I, that I might not be able to put into words. But I heard um, someone speaking about how women do have a high morality rate. They're not committing as many crimes and stuff, right? Or that's how it was. Now we're just giving away everything. But God made women like that for a reason because it is, it is to inspire men. And when- I would beg the differ. I would say half the crimes happening out there are because of women. Really? Men fighting over them, killing each other over them. They're promiscuous with multiple men. How much violence do you think comes from that? Let's be real. Yeah, that's true. A lot of violence comes from that. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Mm -hmm. I know people that are dead today. For no, I, there was one guy, you know, I, I don't know his last name, but he was my babysitter's brother. He was playing pool at a bar, minding his own business. Some girl was flirting with him. He didn't realize that her boyfriend was there. They were just, she was just doing it to make him jealous. That guy got up and smashed him in the back of his head killed him wow. he didn't even do he, do he was even doing anything wrong mm -hmm. so i'll say to men too before you go and take someone out for a woman check your woman bro because a lot of times these men don't know sometimes there's a, a man sleeping with a married woman he doesn't know she's married mm -hmm. like i understand because the devil comes at that point right he comes yeah you need vengeance he made a fool of you you know yeah but yeah are they as violent as men no but what they don't understand is that they were given a certain power mm -hmm. Okay, and some women use it to their advantage for money and for right. this world, but they're losing their souls. Cardi B's of the world, the Kim Kardashians of the world. Yeah. Okay, these are the role models for our daughters, really? That's what you want? That's how you want to be known or remembered or that's why you became famous? Yeah. So I would tell women this. I know that like, I know women get taken advantage of. I know they do. And I know that after a few times, your heart becomes cold. Some women think they're getting revenge now. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to teach all men. And then they come across a good one. But their and, hearts are so cold. And then they destroy them. Mm. You know, they finally get that one man that actually does respect. They might not like what he has to say. And that's the problem when you go with too many men. Now you think you know everything. Oh, I think I, I've been with so many men. Yeah, but you might not have been with the right one. You got to do the opposite of what you've been doing. If you think sleeping around is how you're going to find the love of your life, you're wrong. You need to find the one that's willing to wait for you. The quickest way to get rid of the ones that are full of crap is if you actually have a nuclear family, you shouldn't be running to hide from your parents. You should introduce the person you're dating to your parents. You should have some morals. Because if that man is willing to be uncomfortable, which was really normal, right? When you have to court a woman, you have to go meet her dad first. You have to go meet her brothers. Mm -hmm. When I dated girls in my culture, I had I went and met their father first and their dads. Mm -hmm. And I told them, listen, I'm not here to do anything crazy. You know, like I'm not trying, you know, and I would tell them that. Yeah. Like I have a sister, you know, mm -hmm. and 
you know, so it, it was very serious. It was dating with the intention of marriage. People want to sit here now because we get married much later. Yeah. And they think they're going to get used to being with all these different people. I find it mind boggling because I got married, you know, very young the, the first time. And I don't want to get too much into my personal. I have a crazy journey, but I did it the old way. I actually had like an arranged marriage, right? I was born and raised here. I didn't have a long dating period. It was like two weeks engaged, two weeks later married on paper. Wow. Within a month. And that also, I feel like those times are no longer working either because you, in today's world, you really need to know who you're with. Yeah. You know, women in dating and marriage have changed so dramatically. Yeah. Well, we also don't have a nation or a country where you can go see everyone following the same morals. Yeah. So uh, it's it, impossible. If you here, don't know yeah. to the core who you're with. No, you with, really need to know who you're you with. You need to know. Yeah. But I would say, you know, the safest way to know if you got a real man mm -hmm. would be to abstain from yep. sexual activity. Will he wait? Because if he can't wait, then that's all he wants. And I'm not saying you should. You know, listen, from the spiritual perspective, you shouldn't be doing it at all until you're married, whether you're a Christian, Muslim, or Jew. That's the truth. Yeah. But at least if you guys don't have patience for that, like if you want to have the best odds, like that shouldn't be something that they're getting. Yeah. For a long time. And if you don't want to get married legally, then maybe you get married spiritually first. You find a pastor or a preacher or an imam and you take that oath with God. So at least this way you're not in sin. And then once you feel a little more comfortable, then go sign the papers, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. But the quickest way to, to weed out a low-life woman, will he wait for physical activity? Will he meet your family, your dad and your brothers if you have them? Even if you don't have great relations with them, say, listen, dad, I know you're not really in my life a lot, but if you could just meet this guy or, or get someone to act like your dad, or I don't know, but have a male figure. Yeah. A- He'll sniff, he'll sniff what kind of man he is. Men are good at sniffing out men just like women are. Mm -hmm. Sniffing out other women, right? Yeah. Now you have a buffer. He's waiting for you. The odds are in your favor. But if you want true success, I promise you, unless you find someone, and I don't care what religion, mm -hmm. and I've told my children the same, please find someone that believes in God. I don't care what religion. Do I prefer a Muslim? Yes. But I don't care what you marry, as long as they believe in God. Like truly believe in God. Fear him. Fear. But that's what I mean. But, <laughs> yeah. but also God's hope too. He's not just fear, right? He's merciful. Because mm -hmm. fear the one that fears no one. Because that person's not scared of their actions. Mm -hmm. They're not scared if I cheat on my husband or my wife. That there's, a, you know, in Islam and in Christianity, but in Islam, like adultery is equal to murder. Like you can literally go to hell forever. Like you might get forgiven for it once or twice, but you keep doing like you'll go to hell. You will never like you will go to hell. Yeah. It is a deadly sin in Islam. And it makes sense to me now. This is why they stone people to death. Mm -hmm. If it's done publicly, it's for, it's hard to get stoned to death in Islam, by the way, for adultery. But this was also in Christianity and Judaism. So remember that, Christians are. I do. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His the logic was this. Because in Islam, the only way you could be stoned to death was if four people caught you in the act, meaning that it was you were so lackadaisical with this really evil event really? that four other people witnessed it. Mm -hmm. You have to have four witnesses for you to be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. So that's almost impossible, right? But it's also that if you get caught in that act, why is that punishment so drastic? It's to prevent adultery from becoming the norm which has led to the world that we live in today, Yeah. which has led into a generation of bastards and fatherless homes and broken marriages and has led to the degeneracy of the world and the nation that we live in. Yeah. So adultery was so bad, and it is still bad, that that's why a woman can give birth to a baby and throw it in a dumpster because it meant nothing. Mm. Every day it's done in this country. They find them in toilets all across the country. Yes or no? Yeah, they do. So- because adultery is so mainstream, it looks like a joke. Like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Ah, she cheated on her husband. Big deal. They're going to get divorced. Like, no, it is. Like, you're destroying homes. And women are losing their love for the child as well, like you're yeah, saying, basically. The, the child. child that had no say in it, that it's not his fault that you decided to sleep with their biological father who doesn't care about anyone or anything. It's not that child's fault. You've mm -hmm. lost... You've lost everything if you don't have love for that child. Like it was in your womb, man. Yeah. Regardless of the father or not, that's your baby, man.
your soul like you, you i mean you touch on this so well like the more you sin the, the more you lose your Don't soul heart. and that's why you and i've hear been there women. so i know yeah well i didn't feel nothing i was doing the wrong thing i was out i was drinking i was doing things i shouldn't do and the reason i don't talk about my sin, you're not really supposed to talk about them it's between you and god because you don't want to inspire others to sin so it's something when you do something that's shameful it's between you and god mm -hmm. and you pray for his mercy you know i believe i i believe that because yeah. A lot, a lot of Christians. Because a lot of times, guys will be like, "Yo, I did this last. Listen, it is what it is. Yeah. Yo, last night, yo, I was with her. And yo, oh my God, and they're bragging about. We've all done it as young men, like idiots, you know, vile shit. Mm -hmm. And so many young people just don't. They don't realize. I used to think I was smart when I was twenty. I swear, I used to think I was a genius. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty smart for a twenty-year-old. Here I am, twenty years later. I swear to God, I feel like I don't know nothing. I feel like an idiot. I think the smartest thing I could ever say is like, I don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. I know nothing. I am still seeking knowledge. I don't know anything. I'm an idiot. And if you're 20 years old and you think you're a genius, I, people think because you have money that makes you smart. Like that's another fallacy. Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't make you smart. Yeah. But people respect that materialism so much that they'll shit on a scholar just because he's broke. And that's wrong too. Like we got everything backwards because... We're becoming the generation of bastards. bastards. This is Beck Lover. <laughs> yes. You can check me out. Oh, that was the best way to end. B E K Lover N Y C or BeckLover.com. Next time in Austin, maybe we knock another one out. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Come up to Might New have York, to come up or to Or I'm going to beam you into my show. Yeah. To come back to you, and We'll talk about a little bit about this stuff too. I like talking yeah. about this. Revelation more and everything that's but going on. I, I think it's really important the work that you're doing. Thank you. And the fact that you're allowing cross faith dialogue, which I think is extremely important because of what my mission is. Mm -hmm. And that is my mission. I want to unite, I want to unite the people of God, not to believe, because I know people get touchy with that. Oh, they're, they're gonna deceive us. And no, I'm not here to preach to you, even though I kind of did a little bit, if I'm being real, but not because I was trying to. But okay, I was just you're passionate I was about just pointing faith. out, you know, which I think they will find interesting, the differences between the two faiths and the yeah. similarities. Mm -hmm. And we both believe in the Antichrist and all that stuff. So what I wanted to say is, I hope I didn't offend anyone from your audience. Please double check all my information. I could be wrong. I forget sometimes. Only God is perfect. My intentions come from a good place. I do believe we have more in common than not. I know my faith te teaches me to love Christians. And I know that the people that are trying to destroy us are also trying to destroy you. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. And I've explained it throughout this entire episode. And I hope that we can keep that bridge and focus really on the true enemy, in my opinion. I agree. No, thank you. And I I loved hearing you speak. You're full of wisdom. What you're doing is amazing. I was binge watching your stuff, like I said, um, so the last week. you out of my mind? You said what? You don't think I'm out of my mind? No. You Like I said, I have to invite you over to my husband's family dinner sometime. God willing. Because they would absolutely love to have you. God and you willing. would have. So are they of like the, the faith? Um, are they Arabian or are they Arabian Christian? They're Arabian Christian. Um, so I don't know too much, but he's when he spends time there and everything, oh, I have side in I know some falafel and some tahini, yeah. and you're going to thank the man. Yeah. Shortly, I'll, I'll meet them. I've talked to them over the phone a few times, but I haven't met them before. That's what I was going to say, is that I haven't met all of his family. By before. the way, my first podcast ever talking about, like really talking about dating and relation, like, so I felt like I was like on a nice version of Fresh and Fit. Like a clean version, you know? Really? A very ethical version, yeah. I've hosted some spaces with Myron on X. I'm pretty sure it's a matter of time before I get on that show, too. <laughs> Down with the New World Order. That's all I got to say. Make sure you stay tuned to this woman. She's doing amazing work. I love Thank her. You. The softness of her voice, her tone, Aww. professionalism. I was a little, you know, loud mouth, you know, she's so patient. She's wonderful. And, uh, so just so if you if you guys love me, you know, on, on my, because I know my people watch my stuff, please follow her. Because I, I love what she's doing. Oh, so. thank you. I love what you're doing. So I appreciate you for coming on. And as for Christ would have said, till the next time, peace be upon you. You as well. Did he not say that? He did. Newsflash, <laughs> that's all salam alaikum means. You don't gotta hate us. <laughs> yeah. This is Beck Lover signing off from Austin, Texas. Thank you for coming on. <laughs>